Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Um, today is not the most ideal video. Uh, we do have a little bit of a situation on our hands with the fully built LSV Tech Civic. At the end of the last video, I started the car for the first time with the new turbo kit installed. I'm gonna play a clip back from the end of that video where the car is running. And if you listen closely, you will hear a, what sounds like a knocking noise. Uh, listen closely, uh, here's the clip. I have a happy dad today, boys. Now you might be asking yourself, at the end of the last video, you didn't, like, I didn't seem too concerned about that sound. I, I thought it sounded normal. But the more I let the engine idle, the more I started to notice the sound and the more it started to unsettle me. With this being such a fresh engine and with it being street tuned and with it, you know, being broken in NA and I don't know, there's just a lot of variables at play. I kind of panicked. I, I kind of started to freak out when I started hearing this knocking noise and I started listening to the different areas of the engine, trying to pinpoint exactly where the sound was coming from. I put the car on jack stand. It sounded like it was coming from the side closest to the transmission. So I, I listened to the head, sound sounded lower in the engine. So I got under the car and I listened near the oil pan. As I listened to the knocking noise under the oil pan, I noticed that the noise sounded again, like it was coming from the side closest to the transmission, but it was definitely the loudest under the oil pan. This is like a shit your pants moment uh, for someone like myself who has put thousands of dollars into an engine and hasn't even gotten it tuned yet or anything. That noise really freaked me out. I drained the oil. I threw in some heavier 10W30 oil. I was originally running 5W30 full synthetic. I switched to a 10W30 conventional, hoping maybe a heavier weight oil would make the noise go away. It did not. So the next day, I pulled the car into the garage, put it on jack stands as you see it, and I drained the oil again and drop the oil pan. There was some debris inside the oil pan. I actually have it right here, I'll show you guys. There is certainly some debris in the bottom of this pan. It's hard to tell exactly what any of it is. You know, none of it, none of it looks too scary. A lot of it looks like Honda Bond, which I did have a bunch of Honda Bond on this oil pan gasket sealing surface, so it's likely that, you know, some of it got into the oil, a lot of it got into the oil. I did find about four small pieces of copper shaving. Uh, here's one. Here's one for reference. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it. The lighting is kind of rough. And so as soon as I saw this copper shaving, I immediately started pulling apart the rod caps and uh, started checking bearings. As you can see, I have all the bearings and rod caps laid out on the table here marked one through four. None of the bearings look visibly worn. None of the bearings look like any metal shavings would have been scraped off of them. So with that said, it is still kind of a mystery as to what the knocking noise was, as to where the knocking noise was coming from, and also what those copper shavings are doing in the oil pan. I decided that I'm just gonna go ahead and replace the bearings, the rod bearings. I picked up a brand new set from my friend Mark. Thank you, Mark, so much for hooking me up with these so last minute. These are ACL race bearings. Uh, they are the HX clearance, so it's like a little bit extra oil clearance. That's exactly what I was running before. And so that's where I'm at right now in this moment. I'm about to put some new rod bearings in it, put some new oil in the engine, fire it up and see if the noise is still present. Regardless of if the noise is still present or not, uh, we're gonna drive this car to the Rudd's Racing season opener meet. It's only a couple of miles away. I did drive this car around the block a couple of times two days ago, just to see if the noise would get worse or if there was any vibration. There wasn't. So we're gonna drive this car to the Rudd's Racing season opener meet tonight. We're gonna have DJ from Rudd's listen to the noise, kind of look it over and make sure one, this car is ready for the dyno, which is on Monday, which is today's Friday, like three days away. So crazy, I'm freaking nervous as shit. And if, if he does think the noise is a problem, hopefully you can point me in the right direction. And if we need to reschedule the dyno to make sure that this motor is gonna be safe and healthy, we're gonna have to. I really want this engine to last a long time, be healthy and make a bunch of power. So if we need to slow down this process a little bit, take our time with it, I'm okay with doing that. With that said, I'm gonna go ahead and put these new rod bearings in, put oil in it like I said, fire it up and see if the noise is still present. I think it's probably still gonna be there, 
but throwing in new bearings is at least a good way to eliminate one variable. If I were to just reuse the old bearings and then the noise is still present, who knows, maybe the noise was coming from the bearings after all. In this case, at least we are eliminating the bearings. If the noise is still present, then we know it's not the bearings. If the noise goes away, then we know it was the old bearings. I don't know why, but I'm really not looking forward to doing this, putting them back in, but here we go. Boom, I'm not gonna lie, I just changed the bearings. I just did it off camera. Um, I'm gonna start it. I have oil in it already. I'm running 10W30 conventional. Let's start it, let's do it. Nothing, no point, in, no point in waiting any longer. I'm actually really nervous. I've never just like swapped out bearings like that before. I think it was kind of to be expected. At least I kind of expected the noise to still be there. Oh yeah, for sure. I hear it. You guys should probably hear it too. Hang on. Maybe it's like LMAs or something, I'm not sure. So the EG, we're on our way to the Ruds meet right now. Driving the EG to the Ruds meet right now, not an option. But we are gonna pick up the injectors for it, which is one step closer to the dyno. And we are really, we are really down to the crunch time, the wire, whatever. We're, we're really running out of time here, but it's all like I said, we're out, at, we're out at Ruds to pick up the injectors, but also, I don't know, just in the middle of the video, it's kind of fun, just pop into a car meet. It's actually really popping. This is crazy, look at this. Like the whole street. Dude, shout out DJ. The fact that you made this happen is freaking awesome, dude. Shout out Ruds Racing. Oh, what's that goodie? Let's go. Oh, I love it. Is there a cambio? I heard something about you that I don't know if I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that what you heard? Yeah. What are we gonna do about it? I don't know yet. For goodbye. Yeah. Yeah, it really does. This one is sick. Oh, dude, the details. Look at his right hand drive. I know, I saw that. I'm gonna steal. I'm coming over here to steal your content. <laughs> They're all. <laughs> I'm gonna copyright claim you, dude. <laughs> I'm so nervous, there's so many cameras right now. <laughs> I'm just joking, I'm just joking. How many of you guys could picture Kearney whipping that thing right there? Yes, that You one. could totally see Kearney whipping the bag, the <laughs> STI. Oh yeah. oh yeah. Oh yeah. And then I'd be right behind you in this thing. <laughs> oh yeah. This thing is awesome. I, it's been a while since I've talked to you guys. I've been doing a lot. Uh, behind the scenes. We're gonna go to O'Reilly's right now and pick up yet another oil pan gasket because I'm this one is leaking I tried reusing it when we go to replace this oil pan gasket We're gonna look in the oil pan check out the oil see if there's any metal shavings if there are metal shavings You know that could explain our, our ticking noise or tapping noise, but if there are no metal shavings then we are good for the dyno I also did a compression test the other day all compression was good. It was like 180 something psi on all cylinders so like all signs say that this is a good engine it's just that noise and i found a little bit of metal in the oil pan like i showed you guys the other day so new diagnosis new idea um is that lighting too harsh uh it's pretty um pretty serial killer vibes fresh diagnosis here i don't think bearings make sense uh and here's why 
I think a lot of you guys will agree, in the last video we installed the turbo kit for the very first time on this engine. And in the process of doing that, we dropped the oil pan, we drained the oil for the very first time. That's after Eduardo tuned it. That's, that's about 100 miles after Eduardo tuned it. Uh, so anyone that's saying that his tune may have messed up this engine, it doesn't really make sense because there wasn't any, there weren't any metal shavings in the pan uh, a hundred miles after you tuned it. So with that said, uh, we installed the turbo kit and then the exhaust is a lot quieter after installing the turbo kit. So I noticed that tapping noise. I might not have noticed it before when it was open header because it was so loud. So maybe that's just normal operating conditions of this engine. Maybe that's just how it sounds. And I just didn't notice it before, but now I notice it. So I tweaked, right? Freaking out. Uh, I have rod knock, right? I'm, I'm freaking out. So I go through all this process that you guys have seen already. And here we are, I, I, have a new th I have a new idea about this problem. I keep finding metal in the oil pan. I, as you guys know, I dropped the pan again. And I found fresh metal shavings. The only variable in this engine that has changed as far as the oil system goes is the turbo. Nothing else inside of this engine has changed since before I installed the turbo kit only the turbo this is the only thing that I have changed that is involved with the oiling system. My hypothesis here is that oil is coming in through the feed line, going through the turbo, the bearing is eating itself, which is it's made of brass, it's surrounded by steel. When I ran my magnet through the oil pan, half of the chunks that got picked up were magnetic, they were steel, and the other half were brass, which are not. So I think fresh, clean, filtered oil is coming into the top of the turbo, going through the turbo, lubricating the bearing that is eating itself, and then draining directly back into the oil pan with all of the chunks from the bearing. So right now, I'm pulling the turbo. I'm gonna take it all apart. We're gonna look at the inside of the turbo and see what the bearings look like. And I think it's a turbo, boys. I really do think it's a turbo. So cheers to that. Hopefully we're right. Yeah, cheers to that. Hopefully we're right. Friggin' mug won't brunch. Yeah, dude. Uh, <laughs> I think this shit's expired. It's expired. <laughs> oh, oh, dude, shit's expired by like <laughs> eight months. <laughs> dude, we're gonna turn into this guy, dude. <laughs> you already fit the part, my guy. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> That's me that's seven you. days into trying to Falling diagnose my turbo, car. Yeah. yeah, that's me. I actually think I saw a metal shaving inside of this drain line. I'm not, I could just be like, you know, tweaking myself out, but I'm pretty sure that I see metal right there. Mm. It's hard to tell. I don't know. We're not going to know until we get the turbo off, so there's really not much else to do but just pull the turbo off at this point yeah dude that's where we're at that's the whole thing man dude who do you think has a garrett 3076r right now brand new locally yeah. it's not the turbo Bearings look fine, shaft looks fine, turbo's fine. Uh, that one hurts, boys. That one's, that one's pretty rough, I'm not gonna lie. So, with that said, we're not dynoing tomorrow, that's for sure. I guess I'm gonna put the turbo back together and go back to the drawing board. I guess we'll start with a, a leak down test. I guess I'm gonna put this back together and then once it, once I wrap up this mess I've made, I don't wanna make another mess before I clean up this mess. Oh man, this sucks, dude. Like, this is not fun. I wanna just buy a Corvette. <laughs> dude, it seriously, it sucks so much, dude. Cause like, <laughs> like all of this work, the day before the dyno, and here we are. Man, I like I just wanna go inside. <laughs> I just wanna go to bed, dude. Yeah. I'm not going to though. <clears throat> I'm going to probably put this turbo back together. So we're out at sound performance, uh, to pick up a borescope from my friend Justin Bertel. 
Um, dude, this place is pretty sick. It's really tucked away, but dude, there's freaking crazy cars here, boys. Supras, freaking SC300s, a lot of 2J platforms. This is dope. I think this place is gonna be super cool. Uh, I'm gonna go in there and then uh, hopefully come out with a boroscope. Thank you so much to Justin. He's got the Wi-Fi boroscope. Have a good one, man. This is so clutch. Okay. Can't wait to see if it works or not, man. Let's <laughs> Me see too. what we got. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I think piston number four is good. Number three looks fine. This one looks extremely healthy as well. Nothing weird at all. Pistons and cylinders look fine. So as to where this metal is coming from, I have no idea. I have converted the engine back to being NA, therefore eliminating the turbo from the equation. I've plugged off the oil lines for the turbo, I've plugged off the coolant lines for the turbo, and I have put fresh oil in the engine, fresh coolant, fresh oil filter. I cleaned the pan, uh, windage tray, and pickup extensively. The idea here is I'm going to start the engine, I'm gonna let the coolant bleed, and then I'm gonna put it on the ground, I'm gonna drive it, come back in, jack it up, drop the pan, hopefully one last time. And if there are no metal shavings in the pan, I'm gonna send it on the dyno. If there are metal shavings in the pan, this engine's chooched. That's pretty much it, boys. So, it's end game. Let's do it. So guys, that is uh, that's pretty much it for this one. Um, I ended up finding oil sh or metal shavings in the oil pan again, <sighs> and there's still the tapping noise, knocking noise, whatever. I don't know where it's coming from. I, s I still don't know where it's coming from, and uh, I have no more time to be diagnosing this engine. Automotion is literally, it's like two weeks away. Yeah, two weeks away at this point, even less, week and a half. And so my options are extremely limited right now. And my best bet, instead of just sending this engine on the dyno and hoping it survives, I'd hate to do that and lose thousands of dollars, um, you know, if the motor blows. So my best bet is to pull this motor out and throw in a, a bone stock GSR that I've had laying around in the garage for the last few months. I just, I picked it up a while ago from one of you guys. And uh, that's what we're gonna do in the next video, boys. God, this one sucks. Yeah. Sorry this video took so long to come out. As you can see, it's been a long, long process trying to figure this car out. But uh, it is what it is. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy. I hope you guys realize just how hard I'm working at all times. You know, I work a full-time job, and then I come home and I do this until I go to bed most days. So... I'm going to get this car to auto motion one way or another. And uh, God, does it suck so much. How much more work I still have ahead of me after everything I've already done. But uh, it is what it is, boys. So not the happiest video, but hey, it's reality. A lot of people seem to think like, oh, YouTubers just magically make it better somehow. And it's really not the case like we're really just people who who build cars and do what you guys do and uh, bad things happen to us too as you can see you know this is the third time this motor is third time this motor is blown I guess or been catastrophically damaged somehow so don't know how I got like this I won't know until after automotion because I have no more time to be diagnosing this I don't have time to pull it apart I just have to pull that motor out transfer over the stuff onto the new motor and put that motor in, get it tuned, and get to auto motion because I have like no time to get that done. Uh, we will tear into that old motor, uh, tear into the the built motor uh, that is blown right now, 
after Automotion, and uh, it, it is what it is, boys. So thank you guys for being here. I know this is probably gonna upset a lot of you guys because you guys want to see that motor run, and trust me, I want to see it just as bad as you guys. Uh, but it is what it is. I keep saying that, but seriously. So thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate all of you guys and all your constant support, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. As I always say, boys, let's remember to plan, commit, execute, and attain our goals right now more than ever, boys. Bye. This is what a whole week of diagnosing a metal producing engine, metal shaving producing engine looks like. At least this is how it looks when you're on time crunch and you're freaking out and you're me. <sighs> time to reset, get ready.